right in the middle of this swirling, ethereal, colorful theme music. I wish I could give you all a great big hug. Welcome to Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce. Sitting here tonight in front of this microphone, wondering just what it is you need most. Through the years on this program, we've covered so many topics and subjects. But I think when it comes right down to it, there's one element that we all need. Because there's so much deficit. And that is love and friendship. That's what I've titled our time together tonight. And I'm sure that more songs have been written about human love than any other topic. Why do you think that is? Because it's basic to our essence and our needs. So I'm going to risk once again repeating a program about love and friendship. And wouldn't you say this is what we all need? Everybody needs love. I guess that's why we hear about it so much on radio, television, and movies. It all sounds beautiful and romantic. But is it really true love, or do we confuse that with lust? God tells us that love is patient and kind, never envious or jealous, not proud or always on display, never arrogant or selfish or rude. It's not irritable or resentful. Love never fails. When we love like that, I picture a great big smile on God's face. Let's sing a song, sing a song of love. Sing along as long as it's a song of love. Once you get it, then you can give it, and it's so easy for you to live it. Then you can sing, sing a song of love. Come on, sing along. Let's sing a song. Sing a song of love You sing along As long as it's a song Of love Once you get it Then you can give it And it's so easy For you to live it Then you can sing Sing a song of love It's from above, it's just for you So you can sing, sing a song of excited there about the subject of love. Interesting how some people are 
more on your frequency than others. Years ago, I had a friend, I shouldn't say had, I still have a friend, and yet there have been many years, possibly 30 years, since we've seen one another. He was an excellent piano player, as I recall. We used to do concerts together, both working in various capacities at the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. He was just one of these likable, laughable, good guys who had loads of talent. Well, lo and behold, a few weeks back, on a moonlight cruise on the Detroit River, we were both performing on that big boat. Once again, he came out of the mist, an old friend. But this time, as I saw him in the lobby of the hotel, I didn't recognize him. He looked so distinguished, dressed in black, with a beard, and he had a Ph.D. in psychology, and he was the president of a theological seminary in Kansas City, Kansas. Well, we had a wonderful time together that evening. But as the boat was docking back in Detroit after a few hours on the river there, a beautiful cruise, I just stood alone by the railing and watched all of the procedures, and I sensed this presence come up beside me, and it was my friend John. He said, hey, um, I think we need to get together again, not just on a musical level, but as friends, and it would be great to interact. So I received a letter from him, and we're going to do that. But the thing that I was interested in was that he had written a book with the title Singling, S-I-N-G-L-I-N-G. -I -I Never saw that word before. Singling. One of the things that he mentioned in this book was a personal encounter with a childhood buddy. He said, I had childhood adolescent buddies, but I was past 30 before I discovered friendship. It happened when my wife left me. Dr. John Landgraf continued with these words, My discovery came when for the first time ever I asked for friendship in the middle of a rainy night without even the courtesy of a phone call in advance. Well, when my friend Terry opened his door, bleary-eyed, all I could do was burst into tears and blurt out, I need a friend. Thank God Terry didn't turn me out. Instead, he pulled me inside, hugged me, made a pot of coffee, sat up with me and listened, and I mean listened, for hours. When his wife got up to get ready for work, Terry made us all breakfast, so she could sit with me for a while, too. Then, having convinced me to take the day off, Terry called in sick just to be available in case I needed him during the day. I'll not soon forget it. Ever. Even though we now live far apart, I will always love him. Because he first loved me and gave himself for me. Now, this is a repeat of scripture, I know, but he was an incarnation of the Christ to me. Dr. Landgraf went on to talk about love and friendship. I love you. Have you heard those words today from anyone? It can make the difference through the day and night. I love you. This means I perceive you to be precious, infinitely worthful, priceless. No matter what kind of a body you may have, no matter what kind of a mind you may have, no matter what talents you may have or performance you put on, none of these has anything to do with the fact, and it is a fact, that you are invaluable, precious, simply because you are whatever your equipment and however 
you may use it. You were born that way, created in the image of God, given life by the breath of God. To see that and be grasped by the reality of it is to love. Dr. Landgraf went on to write, Now the you I see as precious has certain elemental characteristics, so elemental as to define the very nature of human being. Curiosity, gregariousness, the thrust toward individuality and the, the pull toward relatedness are among these. No one is an island. We need each other to grow. We need each other to live. Tonight, as we settle on the subject, love and friendship, I'm sure that most of you find coming into your thoughts right now someone who has been valuable to you as a friend. Not only a friend, but perhaps a lover, a husband, a wife. A close, intimate, sharing, male friend for the guys. Now, I'm not getting into the homosexual thing at all. A healthy, heterosexual, male friendship. And the same with the ladies. We all need this. Friendship sets us free for a moment from the sweet burden of sexuality. Dr. Landgraf wrote, I dislike, because it rings all too true of me and other men I know, Lillian Rubin's notion that men, including and maybe especially male caregivers, are good at brotherhood and bonding, but poor at intimacy and friendship. In fact, Rubin wrote, To a woman, the world men live in seems a lonely one a world in which their tears of exposing their sadness and pain, their anxiety about allowing their vulnerability to show, even to a woman they love, is so deeply rooted inside them that most often they can only allow it to happen late at night in the dark. So men would do well to take friend-making lessons from women. One of the most frequent complaints of unmarried women is that while men may want them as sexual lovers, they cannot find male friends. The reason is, few men know how to befriend. We did a program on male friendship. In his work, The Hazards of Being Male, Herb Goldberg illustrates men's plight with a touching story. He said an actress conducted an evening program on the subject of aggression and the theater. She arrived early in the afternoon with a woman friend approximately her age who was helping her prepare for the evening presentation. Both attractive, equally successful heterosexual women, and their friendship and interaction was very special to watch. Her friend hovered around her constantly as involved and concerned that everything should be set up artistically and correctly, as if the program was hers. She soothed and comforted the actress whenever she expressed any doubts of anxiety. Then she helped her dress in an elaborate outfit, checking carefully to see that the makeup and the overall look were just right. Forty-five minutes before the program was to begin, she urged her to rest up and volunteered to get everyone seated and to inform that, that there would be no smoking. Once it began, she was there to help keep the program moving. And after it was all over, she embraced her friend, helped her gather all the materials together, and put them into the van. Even though the woman friend was married and had children, she never expressed a feeling of being imposed upon or rushed to get back home. This observer said, as I saw this interaction go on for seven or eight hours, I was deeply moved 
jealous and saddened at the same time. The jealousy and sadness I felt was for myself and for many other men who I believe rarely, if ever, are capable of or experience such a caring, sharing, and loving relationship. One in which great pleasure is taking in facilitating the accomplishment of the other, just as if it were happening to oneself. Dr. John Landgraf wrote, To become mature, one must learn to be and live alone. But few among us can bear to remain all by ourselves for extended periods. Now, this doesn't follow that we're necessarily meant to marry. Rather, we are meant to have in our lives at least one meaningful, intimate relationship. The model for such a relationship is not erotic love, but friendship, which rarely takes place within marriage or family relationships. It's more likely to happen between two people for whom there is no other relationship except the sacred bond made in the covenant of friendship. Well, I hope I'm not speaking or quoting beyond us all, but maybe we're just touching a problem, perhaps sowing a seed that will germinate and move us into the kind of friendship which we all need. Love is the strongest force in the universe because it began with God. God loved the world collectively and individually so much that he gave. And you can't love without giving. You just can't do it. Let's listen to this in song as Patty White comes to express it further. Love will right now. Are you ready for it? Let's embrace this. Somebody's drifted too far from the shore night has fallen, the searchlight's calling, somebody's ship is caught out in the storm, the winds are shaken, the waves overtaken, if there's a way home, if there's one hope still, love will search the sea for those desperate hearts, love will be the Spread hearts. 
Fatty White, love will light the way. Love is a living thing. It can flow right through us to others. So many folks are lonely. Oh, Lord, they need someone to I can't help making this my prayer. Let your love flow through me. Let your love flow through me. Make me a blessing, Lord, wherever I may be. Keep me pure. Keep me clean so that you might be seen. Let your love, let your love flow through me. Lord, when I meet a lost one, give me all. be weak or timid, their only chance may be with me today. Let your love flow through me, let your love flow through me, make me a blessing, Lord, wherever Let your love, let your love flow through me. Make me pure, make me clean, so that you might be seen. Let your love, let your love impulse. Let your love flow through me. Jean Merlino singing. And we continue night sounds tonight with the sounds and words of love. Love this world through me. Oh yes. Love this world through us, Lord. Tonight we're thinking of the people we need to reach for you. That wayward son, rebellious daughter, husband, wife, parents, sisters, brothers, relatives, friends, the down and outer at the mission, the banker, store clerk, delivery boy, kids on the campus, guys at the club, our town, county, state, nation, the millions in heathen darkness are serving false religions. The millions more in the iron grip of communism. They are all part of the parade. The endless parade moving onward, downward to a Christless eternity. Somehow just now, give us a fresh vision of these lost souls. Fill us with a consuming desire and urgency to stand in their path to warn of impending doom. To give them the word of life. Oh God, this is our prayer.
this world through me. And as we leave one another tonight, let's remember that the pursuit of sex or romance is neither the way to love nor the way to Christian maturity. The pursuit of a friendship is the way to both love and grow in Christian maturity. St. Paul the Apostle started with as great a love deficit as anyone in history. But once apprehended by the love of Jesus and befriended by the Christ incarnate, he wrote, Love is patient, kind. It doesn't keep score. Faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of them all. Love. What a beautiful subject. We barely scratched the surface, but thank you for being involved. I would delight in hearing from you. If we can be your friend, be mutually vulnerable, if we can help. Our mailing address, Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. May you know the touch of love tonight and through tomorrow until we meet again. Good night.